Well, I suppose that I was very lucky. I grew up in the 60s and uh, I lived out over the border here in a county called Donegal. And at that time, I didn't like it very much. It was very backward uh, in every way, economically and socially, politically. So I left and went away to Canada, Australia, joined the Merchant Marine, was in America during the Civil Rights Movement when it began. And so I began to think that the world is not all Donegal. And then you had the really big events like France 1968. The, uh, I suppose I remember one of the most dramatic moments in my life at that time was the Olympics of 1968 when the athletes who, uh, the sprinters, when they mounted the podiums to get their medals, put up their fists with the black gloves on them. And then I knew the world was changing. And at the same time, I was very lucky in another way. Here in Derry, just 50 yards from where we stand, the working class and the bog side and the Craigan were rising up. So I had a place to go. So I came down here and got involved in the movement. On this street outside this hotel, I met the woman who was the secretary of the Labour Party and went over to her and said, I'm this. And that's how I got involved in the revolutionary socialist movement. There were different layers within that movement, there's no doubt about it. But the civil rights movement which would have be, which is how you would describe the whole movement at that time, uh, was made up of the Unemployed Action Committee, the Housing Action Committee, the Republican clubs, the Young Socialists, the Labour Party. And w that movement began to be able to put thousands of pe people onto the streets. And... Uh, the biggest demonstration was on Derry Bridge, the bridge over the river here. There was about ten to 15,000 on that bridge. And to give you an idea of the consciousness, they all sang one song, We Shall Overcome. So they did see their uh, movement as part of the civil rights movement in America, the Black Revolt, the struggle. Probably didn't see it as much as, par, uh, as part of the movement of France 1968, the movement of the working class, only a smaller proportion of us, like more left people, would have seen it as part of the French movement, the movement in Czechoslovakia against Stalinism. But that was growing fast, that consciousness too. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. There's 70 million people in America of Irish descent of one, you know, one in six Londoners are Irish descent. And when this movement started in Northern Ireland, we used to go over to the conferences, the union conferences, Labour Party conferences in Britain, and get speaking at those meetings, what was happening in Northern Ireland. And there was a big sympathy and support for the struggle to change Northern Ireland. There's no, you know, I used to go to conferences where people would be handing you money to cover your expenses. Pay, um, ministers in the British government, I remember getting money from Hattersley to pay a ticket over, and you know, extreme right-wing government minister because there was sympathy for the civil rights movement in Northern Ireland at that stage. Absolutely. It was... I was right for it, mm -hmm. but I never could have made that step to the political ideas that I had mm -hmm. if there hadn't been some, you know, I always think I was right for it and it was right for me. And when I come back always, um, I always go over to the, bo the walls there and get up in the walls, look down over to the bog side in the Craigham. And in my mind, I thank that area for providing an outlet for me and a way to live my life because that uprising gave me an alternative. And uh, I'd been home for about a year before that movement exploded and I was getting involved in smuggling, poaching fish, 
crime I was beginning to sink into I was rejecting conventional society but I wasn't going in a progressive direction <laughs>